Hello, I'm Monica Woodley, Editorial Director at the Economist Intelligence Unit. Um, this year we have collaborated with Temenos on Future Factors, uh, a look at the future of the retail banking industry. Uh, so Ben, why did you choose to collaborate again with us this year? So the, the reason that we um, sponsor this report is that we want annually to take the pulse of the retail banking industry. We want to know what retail bankers are thinking about the industry and the reason to run it every year is clearly so we can compare what was said year on year and, and see how trends are emerging in, in the industry. Uh, well, as with last year, uh, we did a, a global survey of over 200 um, banking executives from around the world. It was a good mix of, um, of different geographies and of different bank sizes, and it was a very senior um, sample, so over half uh, were C-suite. And uh, we then uh, complemented that with 22 in-depth interviews, not only with banking executives, but also uh, with people from the, those challengers um, to the banking system, as, as well as other kind of industry commentators. So I think we got a really kind of 360 view of, uh, of how the, uh, the industry is, is uh, changing right now. The, um, the title for this year is, is quite um, unusual. Do you want to explain to us um, what, that, what that means? Uh, well, the three R's are regulate, uh, revise, and re-envisage. And I think this really uh, reflects the changing um, shift in, 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 um, in concern of banks. So while regulation is still very much um, at the forefront of their concerns, um, they're also having to revise their models, uh, traditional banks uh, looking at how they can change and adapt to changing uh, consumer expectations. Um, but we're also seeing uh, challengers come along who are trying to completely re-envisage um, the retail banking space. And what would you say is your key takeaway from this year's paper? Um, for me, the biggest shift was was really uh, from that that sole focus on regulation to having an equal concern um, with changing consumer expectations and just kind of the speed um, at which uh, banks are having to adapt. So uh, we saw you know, banks not only having to think about digital first, but even some having to go mobile first. Um, there's really been just a, a very rapid change in, in consumer expectations. Um, I guess what was what, what your key takeaway? Um, yeah, other, other than that, I'd say the other really, really interesting takeaway is around competition. So what I remember from last year was that um, in the question about what will have the biggest impact on the industry, I think 22% of people in 2014 said um, that it would be new entrants, whereas I think this year it's something like 33% said um, it would be new entrants. So a big change in how much new entrants will change the industry and, um, and also I suppose the nature of those, those new, new competitors. I guess looking at um, at each of those sections in, in turn, um, in terms of, of regulation, where I've again seen the biggest shift is is that um, I think regulation is always going to be a concern. Um, it still was um, tied for for the top concern, uh, the biggest impact on the industry to 2020. Um, but it's just no longer the sole focus. Yeah, I mean that's that's certainly what we observe when we when we speak to our customer base, which is. You know, clearly regulation is a constant. The level of regulation has been significantly stepped up post-crisis. But I think what's changed in the last few years post-crisis is, you know, we were in a period in 2009, 2010, where all these things were hitting the statute book and people weren't quite sure exactly what form they would take. Whereas now they're implementing them, which is clearly a headache, but at least there's a lot of clarity about what these new regulations mean. I think the priorities for banks are really reflecting their changing concerns. Um, so it, it's less about dealing with regulation and it, it's more customer-centric um, concerns. So we saw um, investing in digital strategies was the top priority, um, followed by um, segmenting uh, by customers by product level and service level, um, and also uh, adapting the branch network. So I think they've kind of gone from survival and, and, and addressing regulation to really a, a more customer-centric um, um, priorities for the future. Yeah, I mean, that, so those priorities certainly would, to me, make sense. I mean, the branch in the future won't be a transaction center, it will be a, a, a center for advice and sales, so that makes sense. Um, in terms of segmenting the customer base, again, you know, that makes sense because the regulator wants that, it's key to cross-selling and upselling, and also, you know, banks can't afford to lose their best customers. In, in retail banking, 
uh, your best customers provide an absolutely disproportionate amount of, of profitability. Um, and then in terms of digital strategy, I mean, obviously it's something I'm discussing every day, but my, what I normally say is two things. Firstly, um, uh, you can't implement a digital strategy without fixing some of the basics. So banks need a single view of their customer, they need a single view of their data, if they're going to make the most of digital channels. And secondly, it doesn't make sense to just replicate what you've done in the analog world through the digital channels. You know, one of the big advantages of, of, a, of a digital channel is that banks can understand the, the, the customer's context. And I think given the amount of data that banks have around transactions and so on, if they're able to blend data with context and, give it, and offer products and services through the channel at the time and place that the customer wants and through the channel they're using, then really we enter a new world of experience-driven banking, which I think is an area where banks can really differentiate themselves. I found it interesting that the um, the focus on investing in digital strategies, I think, ties with um, where banks are concerned about competition coming from. Um, last year, um, I think our respondents, 22% of them said that they were concerned about new entrants having um, a big impact on the, the industry in the years to 2020, uh, but this year that figure shot up to 35%. So overall, more concern about new competition. Um, but what was interesting particularly was where that competition is coming from. So uh, new banks, payment players, shadow banking, really kind of minor concern about those. Um, but the real concern is from uh, tech and, and e-commerce companies. So I think uh, banks are, are recognizing that uh, consumers have had experience with these companies or, and, and that's raised their expectations um, and that also they are, uh, in the way that they're disrupting lots of different industries, um, that they now might be setting their sights on retail banking. I'm, um, I'm not surprised actually. It's, it, we've had a very similar finding from a survey we, we, we ran last year, which is um, banks see these kind of yeah, e-commerce and tech players as their biggest threats. And I'm not surprised because, you know, w uh, the industry is undergoing uh, uh, digitization and digitization throws into the air existing business models. And um, from our point of view, we see kind of the value chain splitting in two ways. So um, new entrants like, um, like Lending Club who are interviewed in the, um, in the paper and TransferWise coming into the market and doing one specific uh, part of the value chain, doing it very well. Um, doing it at a lower cost and with better service. And then the other th part, way in which the value chain is splitting is between front, middle and back office. So between um, you know, the brand and the customer, the risk and the compliance. And I think that's where people like Apple and Amazon are playing. They want to kind of control that front office aspect. So Apple Pay is all around, all about controlling the point of interaction, getting the customer data. And I think there's the end game is to be able to uh, offer a, a marketplace for for products, banking products and services. Clearly, if that happens, then banks, if they lose that point of interaction, they lose the ability to control pricing, to upsell and to cross-sell. So I'm really, really not surprised that they're, they're, they're citing those kind of players as their biggest threat. I think we see the impact of the concerns about competition in um, how retail banks see their profitability in the future. So right now, 35% say that retail banking is their primary source of revenue, but that figure drops to 16% by 2020. So I think there is concern that, uh, that these new competitors will be taking away some of their more profitable um, areas and that, that that will really have an impact on, on profits going forward. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you kind of, you know, if you extrapolate the, the, the current trajectory, that's what would happen. But, you know, my view and what, you know, what we tell our customers is that um, that n doesn't need to be the case. That doesn't, this doesn't need to be the way this plays out. And what we would advise our customers is to offer marketplaces. So, so you know, if we think about TransferWise or Lending Club, these are products and services that could be offered through banks' existing platforms. Um, and, you know, in that way, the, the, you know, the thing that they cannot afford to happen is to lose the point of interaction. At least this way, they keep the point of interaction and they may make a commission on those type of sales. And the other thing we would say about marketplaces is, you know, clearly digitization blurs you know, uh, the, the boundary of where one industry stops and starts. And banks have been on the receiving end of that because you've got non-banks offering banking services. But it could play out in the opposite direction. So banks could offer non-banking services uh, through, their, through their platform, music, books, uh, mobile phone minutes, whatever the digital service was. 
I think that's a really good point. Uh, for me, one of the, the kind of key takeaways, the, the fact that, that banks have a choice, that they can either um, fight back, they can either try and, and learn from uh, the wider retail industry, from e-commerce companies, um, really you know, try and up their game in, in terms of, of meeting those new customer expectations, um, or they can join forces um, either with each other. Um, you know, there are examples in the report of, of how uh, banks are cooperating with each other to provide better services, um, or joining forces with those new challengers. Um, we mentioned TransferWise. Um, if that was something that was offered through a bank's own platform, um, that w- takes away that as, as a competitor and, and makes it a collaborator. So I think that that's really the, the choice that banks have, uh, fight back or join forces. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, for, when I read last year's report, it was obvious how much the industry is changing and how much banks appreciate that. But what wasn't obvious from last year's report, report was that banks were really responding in, in, with the necessary level of urgency. And I think the, when you read this year's report, it's obvious, again, that the industry is going through massive structural change. But what's different is banks really seem to be reacting now and making a, a number of the right strategic moves. And I would agree with you. I think ultimately it comes down to a choice between um, where the banks want to play in the value chain. If they're happy to be commodity providers, then fine, the current course is, is fine. But if they want to continue to win the, cu- the point of customer interaction and, and to generate high profits and high margins, uh, it's, a que- it's really a question of cannibalizing their own business before somebody else cannibalizes them it for them. So. Uh, agreed. So thank you, Ben. Um, and thank you. Future Factors, the, the latest edition, is now available on timinos.com.